So we'll call the meeting to order. And in accordance with the open meeting law, the board states for the record this meeting is being recorded by NORCAM and may be recorded by other local media. We're also recording the meeting, the town is recording the meeting via Zoom. And if you could please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge, pledge allegiance, allegiance to the flag, to the flag of the United States, States of America and, and to, to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right, so we're going to go right into the meeting, and our first order of business is public comment. Is anyone here to provide public comment? Anybody joining us remotely that is, would like to provide public comment? All right. Seeing none? Yeah, I'd like to make a public comment. Okay, Mrs. Herlbert. I, I just wanted to um, say that the transcripts coverage of both the fire station renovation of the house and the um, intergenerational survey has been superlative. I don't know if you saw the article in the transcript, I guess last week, because my mail's been being asked. Last week, yes I do. But they did a, a, they did a tremendous job. Great. And that's great, because it's not always the case. That's good. Yes, it is. But thank you, Mrs. Herlbert. Anybody else? All right. We're going to move on to next order of business, introduce the Director of Public Services and our new public health nurse. Excellent. Take it away. Thank Mr. you, Gilberto. Madam Chair. Madam Chair, through you um, to uh, the board and the community, uh, pleased to uh, introduce uh, to the board and to the community two uh, of the newest additions to the team here in the town hall. And I'll start with uh, Lillian Hartman, who is uh, here in the audience. And I think many of you have already had the opportunity to meet. Uh, Lillian uh, has uh, taken the position of Director of Public Services, which, as the board knows, was established after some discussion in a strategic planning meeting and a vote of the board earlier this year and ultimately approved in the budget process for fiscal year 2023, this current year. Lillian comes to us from the city of Lowell, uh, where she was previously the Senior Center Director. She also has experience uh, in the um, town of, is it Boxborough or Belmont? Belmont uh, as an assistant director in a senior center and also uh, worked for the Norfolk County Board of Commissioners as well uh, in their uh, human services program. Um, she uh, has taken on uh, in addition to the uh, responsibilities of the departments within the division which are Parks and Recreation, the Public Library, the Town Clerk, uh, Youth, Elder and Veteran Services. Um, she's uh, taken on um, that role as well as uh, uh, will, is anticipated to be in a lead role for the uh, age-friendly initiative as we get that rolling again um, here uh, post-pandemic. Um, the last thing I'll just uh, note is uh, there's uh, a number of folks uh, and number of boards and committees that this position um, uh, will be uh, serving as liaison with and um, some of you have seen uh, Lil has attended many meetings in her first three weeks here getting to know folks. I greatly appreciate you taking the time to do that. Um, and uh, with that, uh, welcome to Lillian. And uh, for uh, those who don't know. Mr. Gilberto, is, is this the first time the town has filled that role? It is, yeah. The board's action All to right. move to fill it was the first time uh, it, the, the position was created as a standalone position. Um, working alongside the Director of Finance who's here this evening, the Director of Public Works who will join us in uh, just a few minutes, and the Director of Public Safety. Oh, uh, that's Chief great. Murphy. So, so you made history with us and you made history as a female. So we're welcome. We're, we're, get, we're happy to have you. Her, her office is here in Town Hall, um, located um, in the former room 10 meeting room um, right next to Human Resources. And so uh, feel free to stop by and say hello um, for the, the public. Um, I'll just also note um, she has been um, working very closely with the Council on Aging um, for um, the vacancy that we're all familiar with in the Elder Services Department to move that process forward and so I know a lot of progress has been made in the past few weeks um, uh, in conjunction with the folks over at the Council on Aging so we look forward to having an announcement in the near future regarding uh, a director over there. Excellent. Well, welcome. <laughs> If you don't know already, you have a, a group of amazing people that you'll be working with. So, so welcome. I don't know if you want to say anything or anyone else has any comments, but we are happy to have you here. And anyone else? 
Well, good. Welcome, welcome. Welcome, yeah. good. welcome. welcome and let us know what we can do for you to help. Yes, yeah. I'll just say hello and so my back can be on the TV. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, I appreciate the confidence of being appointed to this position and I hope to uh, serve well and show that it's a worthwhile change in the structure and supporting those six departments uh, so that things just look more wonderful a year from today. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And uh, Lillian, um, and I'm kind of smiling as I look to the finance director, but Lillian went through an extensive hiring process that took multiple interviews and was disrupted by multiple cases of COVID in the spring. Um, it was very patient in the, uh, in the process, but I want to thank Liz for sitting in on the evaluation of the candidates along with the human resources director, the public works director, and the public safety director. Uh, oh, there's Joe as you speak. So uh, it's a, you know, a good team, and we, we had strong candidates, and uh, we're pleased to have Elaine here. So thank you. Thanks, Liz. Excellent. And I'll move right along to the sure. public health nurse, um, Pamela Merrill, who is uh, here in, seated in the front row. Um, some of you may know uh, Pam. She is a resident uh, here in town, so we're pleased to have a resident uh, stepping into the role, much in the way Ms. Bath did. Um, how many years ago is it now? <laughs> how many years and how many times? <laughs> it's at least three times. <laughs> <laughs> We're running out of fingers and toes here. Um, Pam comes to us with 39 years of nursing experience, which is a tremendous asset. We're really pleased uh, that you're uh, looking to join the team here. Um, I think most recently with Harvard Community Health Plan and, and uh, Harvard Vanguard. Um, and I know you also have experience working uh, more on the um, administrative end as a legal nurse reviewer um, in the previous position. Um, so we're really, really excited to have you on board here. Um, the board may know we've struggled with sort of what the future of the position ought to look like in terms of is it, we knew it wasn't five hours a week, which is what we started with six years ago, I think. Um, it became 50 hours a week during COVID for Pam. Um, we funded it at 35 hours a week. We still couldn't hire somebody. And so um, the position now is at least 24 hours a week, Bob, is that right? Um, and I, I think we've got a, a good balance of providing a resource for the community for some public health programming, public health and nursing, um, as well as dealing with the day-to-day -day, uh, work of Maven and tracking our, our cases. Mm -hmm. So um, Pam, we're really happy, happy to have you here. Um, to her office is here in the town hall, um, right near the director's office across from the DPW Health and Building Department. Um, so welcome. Yeah. welcome. We won't give out your home we, phone number. Are we losing? Are we? Uh, are are yeah. you really? Are we going to still be around, Pam? Or because that would be strange if you weren't. So. <laughs> That's okay. Well, you're we'll still going to stick name. around. We <laughs> got the same name, so it'll be That's easy. Looking for the nurse, it's just ask for Pam. <laughs> <laughs> and you get her. Um, it's my goal that this be the most successful transition we've had. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, we're just working with her for the past several days, and it's been a pleasure because she comes with a lot of knowledge. She did a lot of work with COVID already. Um, she's going to learn our systems, but she will be having the time to do that. And I will stay, obviously, if they want to. <laughs> um, I think it's going to be exciting. Um, she's got lots of ideas. Well, we, we surely owe you gratitude for sticking around this whole time and in this very, very difficult time that yeah. we As we silly as it sounds, it was very rewarding because I have never done such things in my personal, you know, in my professional life. I had never done mm -hmm. public health nursing, so mm -hmm. a lot of time came out. Mm -hmm. Madam Chair, you know, obviously, uh, we spent a lot of quality time over Zoom over the last uh, two and a half years, uh, and and really, as you mentioned, you know, Pam Bath has just been a tremendous resource, um, in and out of retirement a couple of times uh, for us. You know, as we're trying to fill this position permanently, and it's just done a tremendous amount of work and put in the hours and put in the time. And uh, I don't know how we would have gotten through this as well as we did without Pam being, being making herself available. Uh, somewhat reluctantly at times. I mean, as she says, she, she's hoping this is a very successful transition, <laughs> you know, and it, does, it doesn't have to come out of the treatment time and again. But we do owe her a debt of gratitude and appreciate and note of appreciation publicly here again uh, for what she's done. And she's agreed to stay on for as long as again. The administration is providing additional time so that Pam can help with the transition, which is critical. And 
again, we hope you're very successful, Pam. And Pam, we hope you get to retire now <laughs> and uh, enjoy your, Thank you. you know. <laughs> and, uh, but you know, but if you see me hanging around, yeah, well, then, and we want you to hang around as much as you want. But it really, we truly appreciate all that you've done uh, for the community. And again, not everybody <laughs> understands or can appreciate what you've done for us. And it's important for us to recognize that publicly well, if people tonight. Well, don't know what I was doing. I guess I was successful because we didn't end up with more problems than yeah. I've noticed. Right, good point. Mm -hmm. Yes, yep. thank you very much. Yes, for sure. Great. Thank, thank you. you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Which is a wonderful thing. It is. Yes. Which we greatly appreciate. Sure. Welcome. Tim, welcome to welcome to Pam. Excellent. <laughs> All right. So we are moving right along. We're good for next order of business. The DPW director has an update on changes to the solid waste program. Congratulations. All right, so Recycling and Solid Waste Update. Welcome. Good evening. So I will have it in just a moment. All right, so a bit of an update. Give you a quick little rundown on where things stand for our uh, program changes. There are a number of changes that we want to talk about tonight and um, make people aware. Um, we will be putting this information out in a number of different ways so that people who are uh, maybe not familiar with the changes that are coming will, will be in time for them. So the, uh, the first change, that we, well, let's talk about the current program. So we are, are currently um, it's a residential four dwelling units or less uh, program. You can um, opt into that program, or for the most part, I guess it's an opt out. Um, you know, we'll get notified if people in that category do not want to be part of the program. The uh, annual flat fee is determined each year for the services that are uh, provided in the program. The uh, residents are limited to disposing their trash in up to uh, two 50 gallon trash barrels. That was a, a recent. Um, change in our last um, hearing on that. And we also have, you know, on occasion some overflow trash that happens and they've been allowed to call um, DPW to arrange for JRM to, JRM to pick up that overflow trash. There's a little bit of coordination that, that does happen and I'm sure there are other um, situations where just overflow trash is just left out there without notification as well, but nonetheless, um, that is what's happening. The um, bulk items are picked up. There's one bulk item per week that they're allowed, uh, such as at this point in time, still mattresses, box springs, furniture. Uh, other things can be left curbside for trash collection on the same day. And JRM, that no additional cost to the resident will be picking that up. CRTs and TVs, uh, computer monitors, those things do have a cost. Uh, there is uh, a scheduled pickup that would happen and you know, the cost actually is not charged to the residents on this particular one. It's a $15 charge per piece to the town. White goods, air conditioners, washers, dryers, that's another scheduled pickup. And in that case, there is a cost to the resident for those pickups. And um, if it's Freon based, there is um, a little bit more to the cost than non Freon based. Special collection events, so we've conducted uh, as connected at the uh, DPW garage. So we have uh, special collection events each year uh, available for all residents of North Reading, regardless of whether they're in, uh, in the program or not. And uh, June event offers free paper shredding, material collections for recycling, rigid plastic, waste oil, metal batteries, and fluorescent bulbs, tires, propane tanks. They're all collected and disposed of. 
the October Special Collections event, scheduled uh, for the 15th of the month, in addition to other material collections, Officer Household has this waste collection day. This is free to all residents. Brush and leave drop-off, oil drop-off events continue to be open to all residents from April through October, and on the last Saturday of the month, and on uh, Saturday and Sunday in the month of November. And the sanitation budget annual, annually includes funding to support these special events. So implementation of changes to the solid waste disposal program, October 1st, 2022, New Public Services. Purchases of purchase of JRM takes effect. They will be transitioning their equipment and their labor force in the fall in the months to follow. Effective November 1st. We are offering rolls of pay-to-throw trash bags that will be available for purchase at um, local retailers and they are to be used to dispose of overflow trash. The bag size will be 33 gallons and will be holding approximately 35 pounds of trash. Residents no longer need to call the DPW for notification of overflow trash. So this is effective November 1st. Through public services will automatically pick up the overflow trash if it's in a patient code bag. They will not pick it up if it's not in that bag. Do you have an idea of where those bags will be sold? There's a list that will show. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. Yes, okay. Getting ahead. All right. Mr. Mr. Studo. Um, just a quick question. Uh, if, because I know I mean, I guess you buy a second barrel, but if you have like a 50 gallon, like, you know, your barrel with a few bags and then you have like a contractor bag next to it, if it's not, they won't take it unless it's in another 50 gallon. Well, you know, that, yeah, there's going to be, some, there's going to be some uh, mix of bags and barrels that <clears throat> still should equate to, you know, two barrels, if you will. But you can't have, I, I wouldn't want to see you know, two large contractor bags, exactly. a 50 gallon, gallon barrel, yeah. and, and no patient throw bag out there, you know? <clears throat> so, to what degree we want to say, you know, put it all in the barrel, if it doesn't fit, you know, put the rest in a patient throw bag. But some people do have it as loose bags out in the street. Uh, and the only, the only reason I say is like, and again, I can even talk from my own, uh, I know, I don't have two because I never really need to. So the thing is, I mean, I guess if people, it just so people know that if, if you do have those one-offs where you would have like a, instead of your regular barrel, like another big trash bag you'd put out there, you know, just because you don't have a second barrel that now you do need to have a second, just so people know and the, you know, because I could see a call coming in and saying, well, I had like a one trash bag next to like the 50, but I didn't have two 50s out, so why didn't you collect it, right? Isn't that the same? I, that's why I'm asking. Yeah. No, it's a good question for sure. Think I'm going to piggyback on that because we have a 700 foot driveway, so we just drive the bag. We don't have a barrel at all. So we just put the bags out. So that's a good question. They're going to pick up the bags as long as it would be considered what would be in a. Yeah, you know, you, you don't want to have a situation where, you know, those that are um, collecting the trash have to guess a lot, you know. But I mean, if you if you talk about having six tall kitchen bags out there, is, does that equate to two, you know, uh, contractor bags? You know, it's hard to really sort of have a, a good uh, sense on that. You know, but if you had them all contained in, I guess, you know, put two or three kitchen bags in a in a contractor bag, that would probably cost cost two one barrel. That's what we do. Yeah. Yeah. Contractor bags. Yeah. You're going to find out. <laughs> you know, when my trash is blowing over to your house. <laughs> but, the, but the point is, you're paying a fee, so you might as well get the barrel and put it in the barrel and just wheel it up there. Or oh, just wheel it up there. Mm -hmm. Or leave or the barrel at the bottom of the driveway. Take you your bags down like you do and throw them in the barrel. And then every snow storm, I'll get them in your barrel. Yeah. All right. Right? There you go. Okay. <laughs> it's not a one, one size fits all, but you'll, you'll have a routine uh, that will work for you. Trash. Yeah. yeah. We always talk a lot about trash. Yeah, we love trash talk. <laughs>
All right, so. Okay, we're only on slide three, I think. So we have a 7.30. I'm talking, I'm going to talk a little bit. All right, so, um, so I want to talk a little about um, new DEP waistband uh, regulations, uh, matches with box springs. And so, effective November 1st, everything's happening together November 1st. Uh, these items will no longer be allowed to be, really? to be disposed of in the trash. They're to be recycled. Um, so residents will be responsible for proper recycling of their old mattresses and box springs. If a you know, new mattress and box spring is being purchased, residents should make arrangements with the company they purchased their uh, mattress from to haul away their old mattress and box springs. That, that would be the first ideal step. We are looking to see if there is um, opportunity to have a, a container at the DPW garage where, you know, for free they can, they can bring that mattress to that location if they are without any other means to do so. Um, so that is uh, where that stands. We are actually having, uh, DEP has a um, bit of a, a meeting or seminar tomorrow to, to bring in some mattress companies to give us a little bit more information about services that they're offering as well. So, you know, every municipality is in a similar situation trying to figure out you know, the best way to service mattress and box, box spring uh, collections and, and recycling. So the, uh, the other um, thing that uh, looks, um, that is a waistband regulation is uh, clean textiles. So we'll talk about clothing, bedding, towels, shoes, pocketbooks, uh, not contaminated with mold, bodily fluids, insects, oils, hazardous substances, uh, from being disposed of in the trash. So if it's clean, you can you know, donate it, bring it to a bin, textile bin, um, or some other collection services, then that's what you need to do. And there are some local um, uh, places in, uh, nearby. Uh, there is um, in Wilmington, there's the uh, Savers, there's Green Salem and Andover. There's a number of uh, textile donation bins uh, in various organizations near town and town. Yeah, there's some right in the uh, parking lot at the high school. Uh, and again, we had a, a proposal that didn't go very far because COVID came along. But there's an outfit that I was in contact with that was willing to bring the bins to North Reading, and again, they'll pay you a certain small amount of fee for the stuff that's put there. And again, a lot of local organizations and other communities are doing this, and probably at the high school too, with some of the PTOs or some other um, local uh, community awesome. groups, that, you know, that raises a little bit of money mm -hmm. uh, and does the right thing. It gets rid of the textiles appropriately. Right. But I know there's some right in the uh, parking lot at the high school, the lower, lower a, parking lot. A new one recently put at the, uh, the Moose Lodge as yeah. well. Yeah. yeah. So. Uh, they have a sign up. But there are a lot of, uh, there's a few of them available around town, but I think we should try and help facilitate that too. And again, we may want to, you know, put it towards the historical commission to help finance, you know, their, their undertakings or things like that. But make space available, whether it be at the DPW site down at, the, you know, here at Town Hall but other locations around town too. Mm -hmm. And they're, they're willing to bring them in, so. All right, so um, other changes, so actually, you know, not so much a change, but one bulk item per week, other than the mattresses and box springs, can continue to be left at the curb on a regular uh, trash collection day and be picked up by the public services at no additional cost to oh, the resident. thank God, one less thing for us to hear complaints <laughs> about. <laughs> Um, CRTs and uh, TVs, all of that stays the same. Right. White goods, all that stays the same. Right. Just going to take out the uh, mattresses and box springs from the, the bulk item. I, I believe CRTs were free. That's a change, right? That increase. Um, so if I did not, uh, well, it's fifteen dollars to the town. To the town, not to the residents. Correct. Per se. Yeah. Yeah. So the residents are not charged, but you know, we get a tally of what was collected and, and we uh, see that on our invoices, so we keep track of that. All right. Um, so <clears throat> what is the cost of the patient throw bags? Uh, well, the patient throw bags are sold in rolls of 10 bags at a price of $25 per roll. And mass sales tax do not apply to the sale of the, the bags. The retail purchase price of a page of bag, as we talked about the last time we met, is the price to cover the cost of the manufacturing and distribution of the bags, plus the cost of the, of the uh, trash that's contained in the bag. So where can I purchase page of throw bags? 
So a number of local retailers are being invited to participate in the retail sale of page throw overflow bags. The list is Stop and Shop, Walgreens, CVS Pharmacy, Route 28 Lucky Bar, Joe's Quick Mart, Buyer's Store, Christopher's Market, 7-Eleven. All of these uh, companies will, or, or locations will be receiving an uh, invitation letter from Wayzero. Um, they, those letters will probably be dropped in mail on Monday. Um, I'm also going to be making um, you know, a trip to hopefully each one of these stores with uh, Dan Greenberg to look at uh, or, to, or talk to managers of these stores um, on Monday, if all works out well. And uh, at least give my heads up that more information is coming in, in that. If they see a letter, don't throw it away, you know. So that's a little bit of outreach there. Going to add on the two hardware places too. And we could, yeah, we yeah. could add on exactly. If, if there's more interest, I mean, a lot of these stores will do it because they want the walk-in business right. when people come in to you know, pick up a, you know, a roll of mm -hmm. bags. They're also going to buy a few other things, most likely. I know I do. All right, so we have a public hearing coming up, but I just want to give the, my colleagues a chance if you have any questions about that presentation. All set? But just, just a comment again. Appreciate all the effort that's been put into it, not just by the administration here, but the recycling committee. This has been a long yeah. time coming in helping to address, you know, ensuring that people are recycling more, get more conscious of uh, what uh, make it a little little bit more fair as far as the pay as you throw. Um, it doesn't get us to where we really want to be as far as the people who are just putting out one barrel a week are still paying more than those that are putting out two. And uh, But we're getting there. And I think this is a great start. And I think uh, the state is also forcing us to address certain situations too, and that's not a bad thing either. So again, I applaud everybody's effort in getting this to come to fruition. And, and uh, uh, if we can expand the, the retail outlets you know, a little bit more like the hardware stores to, to help facilitate this, that'd be great. Okay. That's all. Thank you, Mr. Walner. And we met just before this meeting, um, and there'll be a campaign to get, you know, letters to the editor, social media, um, stickers, you know, like as, as the month goes on, we're going to be telling people you have an oversized barrel, you have too many barrels, like there's going to be ways to communicate with people even before it hit November 1 to let them know that this Good. is coming. Um, and I would ask um, at town meeting if you know if we have board reports if I can just do a short, you know, um, they're going to write up something for me. But at the um, town meeting on Monday, if I can also announce some of these changes. Well. Article one. Yeah. What's that? Yeah. Article one. Yeah. You have a, a sixty second limit though. Fine. <laughs> <laughs> um, We're trying to get as oh no, no. as much I'm just, out I'm as just, we possibly yeah. can. Yeah, so we, great. we do because it's going to be a bit of shock for some people. You know, some people throw a lot, put a lot out, and when we don't, when they go by and don't pick up the trash, they're going to get calls. So we want to get the big people prepared as much as possible. Okay. Right. Anybody else? I just quickly want to thank you as well, and I also wanted to mention that that this the town still does this hazardous disposal day which uh, is not prominently displayed on the website. I did talk to the town administrator about making sure that's coming up in October, I think. Correct. You know, for things like the mercury, fluorescent lights, or other, other hazardous things. And if, if there could be a list for people so that they know that I don't think most people, I think most people might just throw them in the trash and don't realize how dangerous that is. And then the second thing is we did talk a while ago, and I think it was Mrs. Hurlbut that mentioned this composting too, and a lot of the communities are engaging in services with uh, with clean composting companies um, for uh, similar types of pickup, which could eliminate or reduce a lot of the a lot of the waste and making it into fertilizer and make right. an arrangement. So I would look forward to seeing that component of it. I know this. There was a lot of intervening factors disrupting this from coming to us, so we really appreciate you keeping it on track and and um, all the changes with the hauling company and all those other issues. And so um, I'd like to see that component come back to us too to see if we can maybe engage 
for, for those residents that want to do compost, and I think that would be Right, well, I, I can tell you that, um, you know, the discussion at the recycling committee is just that, just to start really um, looking at developing a, a recycling component or option that we can present to the residents. So okay. you'll hear more of that, I'm sure. Great, great. There was another question. Oh, I'm so sorry. Just, yeah, just one other thing that I think we spoke to you about, when I say we because uh, Mrs. Gonzalez was part of this too, is as far as the rigid plastic, um, we have it like once a year. We can pick, you know, drop it off in June. Yeah. But if we could get a, uh, a container down at, at the DPW site like you have for metal, um, I think you'd get an awful lot of uh, yeah. participation level from the community instead of putting it curbside. I didn't re hear what you said. This is the uh, rigid plastic. Oh, the rigid. We, we okay. collect it in June, you know, yeah. a special collection yes. thing. Yeah. Uh, but the, you drive by and you see an awful lot of that out uh, curbside. They're just going into the regular trash, and I think people would be, if they were made aware of it, uh, more conscious of it, and it would be utilized. Uh, so if we have room for another trailer, but that right. would be great. Well, I think we do. I think there's opportunity to create a, a better um, you know, situation at the yard to uh, have you know, dumpsters and, and um, control space for collections like that. So. Great, thank you. And, and when is the contract up? I, I know JRM's getting bought out, but our contract goes for how much beyond? It, it continues. Um, I think we've got. Yeah. Another three. I think it's four more years. Four more years. I think this is year it's one or five right, years. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Just right. Yeah. That's a good thing. Yeah. 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 No, that's a great thing. So, yeah, so they, they're going to honor that contract. It's, right. it's just that they have to um, sort of start up, you know, with their, their people, their equipment, and, and they're ready to go on the one. I just wanted to say I'm happy to see this come to fruition. You know, I was there from the beginning, and the reins have been handed over to Mr. Longer, which looks like he's going to be carrying it forward. I'm just happy to see it going to start happening. Mm -hmm. Mr. Gilberto? I just wanted to note, and I, I know I had to step out of the meeting briefly, but we had some conversation about the collection schedule, yes, yes. and uh, did we talk about this already? We Tonight? did, and I was going to ask you what was it, whether there was so an update to that. There is an update, um, right. and the update is this. We've had some conversation with Republic Services, and as the DPW director mentioned, we're going to start seeing their equipment in town here uh, as soon as October. You may see their blue and red and white trucks um, with their staffing on them. Um, they are going to be looking to uh, make potential modifications to the collection schedule, but we agreed in a meeting with them last week that we would hold off on doing that and let them get their feet underneath them to see how, how things go. Um, JRM is regularly not finishing the town, for those of you who have, you know, have noticed. Um, it's just a matter of where you live, whether you're the week that they don't finish or not. Um, so I think that's a good thing because, you know, we, we don't, you know, the town's used to the Tuesday collections. It's going to take a lot of notice to let folks know that we're making yeah. a change when that time comes. Uh, we talked to them about a multi-day rather than a five-day collection. And I think it's something that they're willing to look, lack, to look at, but um, we're, we're expecting they're going to be looking for a five-day collection. So that, that comes with its own challenges of five dividing the town. Week. Five days a week. Dividing the town into five areas. Um, we don't have a timeline for that. Uh, at one point, there was discussion about it being in the fall, but I, I think we're looking at something um, further out into the next year at this point based on our conversations. So I just put that out there. It's not anything that's you know in, in writing, but I know it came up in the last discussion, and um, we've agreed with them that this is not the time to implement that. Let them get some experience with the town, and then we can work together for what the right move is. Okay. Thanks, Mr. Gilberto. Okay. All set? Thank you. Sure, sure. Um, I have a question. Oh, you come forward. Okay. Thank you. It's Debbie Pascal. I have a question. You can stand at the podium. It's okay. Oh, thank you. <laughs> about nickels, we, we do deposits on bottles and nickels and all that. A lot of people throw them in the trash. Do you think that's increasing our bill by people not really recycling where they can? And that's. I always wonder about that. Do we make any money on, on the can when we recycle it? Oh, you mean, I thought you meant they were, they're throwing nickels in. <laughs> nickels. I thought you were. And they are, actually. <laughs> <laughs> they really are. But a lot of people don't recycle all their bottles and deposits in the state, and it's going into the mainstream. I think that they should, you know, maybe we should say something. Doesn't that cost us money? because they're not recycling? What do you think? It's adding to the cost. Uh, 
Um, well, that's a good question. I don't know that we have the entire answer, although we have studied, we definitely have studied this, studied the tonnage, studied yeah. what would help, studied what isn't helping. It's, this is a pretty much a dialogue that's been going on at <coughs> least for the last four or five years um, in terms of encouraging people. We had a fabulous, when you were first on the committee, I, I always forget his name, but we had a fabulous gentleman who promoted recycling. Oh, Ed McGrath. Yes. Yes, Ed McGrath. I can't believe I can't remember his name. Well, we have Dan Greenberg now. And Dan yeah, is did. fabulous, too. <laughs> and oh, he, he just joined us. He just joined us. Well, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> putting Good. the word out yeah, there. The and, yeah. But at the same time, we're not in people's houses to, to police or punish for, for that. So. I know some towns also, like down the Cape, they have a place where you put all your deposits your nickels and then it goes to a school fund. It's a great I mean it'd be a great thing to do. Yeah. But the the people that are gonna participate in that are, are probably not throwing it in the trash anyway. So they yeah. if they're the ones throwing it in the trash you're probably not gonna make an extra trip to to the school. But <coughs> that's a good suggestion though. And are, are you all set? Yeah? Miss well, why don't you, because we actually have an information. I was reading an article on Boston.com uh, on September 22nd. They had all these recycling, you know, what can we do to make it better? One of the things they were saying is that town should require clear plastic bags versus dark so that you can monitor what's going in there. I know people wouldn't like it, but really when you think about it, it's kind of true. So are we using colored bags, dark bags for the program or? Yeah. Okay, I was, just, I was just wondering. And the last comment I just want to make, ever since you know the internet's come on board, we have so much cardboard packaging out there. It's everywhere, that's really increased our load substantially. And I think we've all had a product come in where you order something that's this big and it comes in a box that big. So I think they have increased our uh, load, which is not going to change, but what I want to say is I ship internationally. In the country of Germany and France, they now require us to pay for the recycling of any packaging coming in. So I think that's going to be the trends in the future, mm -hmm. but we do pay for all of the cardboard that's coming into us. Mm -hmm. And it's really not something that you're going to make money on. I just want to put that out there. I think it's going to be more of an issue from the state and federal levels in the of future course. of what we can do. And people should realize that. Of course. Sure. Thank, you. Thanks. Thanks. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you. Do you have a, Mrs. Herbert? Do you have a? Yeah, I just wanted to make a comment um, uh, concerning the previous speaker's uh, mention of a container that collected for a local school or whatever. In, in Maine, they're all over the place. Every community has got the hockey team, the school, the um, mm -hmm. veterans, or whatever else will have a big container. And you just drive by and put your recyclables, your deposit on you know things and you know, paper bag it inside of it. And it's a lot easier than knowing when the liquor store is open, getting your new car, going over there, going around the back, you know, putting it in the machine. And this is easy peasy and people do it all the time. So I don't know where you put those, I'm sure there'd be a lot of things about it. <laughs> large containers and then Well these are all great ideas. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> they're all great ideas to consider as we move along and try to move forward with all of our efforts at, you know, at recycling and, and other <coughs> other conservation efforts here. Mr. Gilberto? No, please. No. I just was going to note the Masonic Temple actually has a setup that you're describing for those. Oh, really? Yeah, it's to drop off it, the for drop off bottles and cans. Yes. Yeah, it's it's pretty. It, it's often overflowing <laughs> with bottles and cans, but uh, there is a, a spot. Is there? All right, that's good to know. It's good to know that we have all these places in the community that are doing that. Well, thank you for the, for the extra comments. Um, we're going to call the 730 Warrant Article informational hearing to order for the October 3rd, 2022 Fall Town Meeting. And uh, for my, I I believe it's, a, it's page 47 in our packet, the, uh, no, 48 is the article listing. At least that's mine where I have it. 
So we have a very, for some reason, we only have 14 articles. So we are going to let Mr. Gilberto take, take over here and go through, a, go through a rundown of anything and just noting that um, we did vote some of these and then we'll, I think we should do all, go through them each and then we can ask if people have questions. All right. Thanks, Mr. Gilberto. And Madam Chair, I don't know whether you wish to assign articles as we go or do so in advance of the meeting on Monday night. I'll leave it to you. Uh, you, you know, it, it, because this is, my, my intent was just to assign, you know, just go down the line and assign as we go along, unless my colleagues have a particular desire to present one, any one of these. But I think we're... We should, that's fine. Great, I'll just go do, the, do three at a time as we go along. Great, thank you. Um, article one, here and act upon reports of town officers and committees. This is a standard article at which, uh, or under which uh, boards and committees and officers can stand up and make reports. I believe Mr. Walner has uh, indicated his uh, intention to make a report on behalf of the recycling committee under this article. Uh, there may or may not be a report from the Economic Development Committee um, relative to um, the wastewater project, and I have not heard of any others at this stage, at least. And both the select board and the finance committee have recommended. Okay. Moving along to number two, Article Two, prior year bills. We have three, uh, four bills that we are contending with, uh, all of which are intended to be paid for out of the fiscal year 2023 departmental operating budgets. Uh, two are deductibles on our insurance policy for uh, losses uh, incurred at private residences due to a water and a stormwater related issue, respectively. Um, a, a prior year bill for some kitchen equipment at the Hillview, and then a bill for conservation commission training from fiscal year 2022. Again, we believe there's sufficient funds within the respective operating budgets for this fiscal year to pay those bills. Article 3, to appropriate money to the stabilization fund, we do intend to recommend passing over the article um, and to consider a potential transfer in as part of the financing plan at the June town meeting. Uh, the board had previously opted to make a recommendation uh, at town meeting for this article. Uh, my recommendation to the board is to recommend passing over the article. Just one quick, Mr. O'Leary, I can start with you or end with you. You want to take the first three? Uh, <laughs> All right, you do you have a preference in, in terms of your which ones you'd like to present? Well, I mean, I have an interest in obviously ten. It's number ten. All maybe, right, you know, so maybe eleven, but you know, ten, but eight, ten anyway. I'll I'll first All right, I, 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 I I'll mm -hmm. just have Mr. Walner. Is that all right? Sure. You want to do one, two, and three? Sure. All right, one, two, and three. Mr. Walner will present for us. Article 4, appropriating money to the Capital Improvement Stabilization Fund. Balance is $1.680 million. We are recommending transferring in $250,000 in free cash in accordance with the Capital Improvement Financing Plan. Okay. Article 5, appropriating money to the Solid Waste Stabilization Fund. The recommendation is to transfer in balance from the fiscal year 22 program of $30,000 uh, from uh, free cash. I'll just make a note with regard to certified free cash. Um, we know we ran into an issue with regard to the timing of that certification for the last October's town meeting. Um, the finance director has been in touch with the department and there was reasons to believe today, and we believe we're still on track to be certified for, uh, for the October town meeting. Um, and that's particularly important relative to a couple of capital articles that will be coming up. Madam Chair, three article six, appropriating money to the participating funding arrangement fund. The balance is just over $1.5 million, and we are recommending transferring in $380,750 from free cash. And that represents the town's share of the surplus generated from active employee health insurance through the PFA in fiscal year 2022. PFA continues to perform very well. There is a, a corresponding amount representing the employee share of the premium that is held in um, a <coughs> fund um, by the treasurer. Okay. Mrs. Gonzalez, can you take the, those three? Four, five, and six? Four, five, and six. <coughs> mm -hmm. 
Madam Chair, through you, Article 7, um, the fiscal year 2023 operating budget. We are not recommending any, excuse me, um, we, we are not recommending any changes to the budget at this point in time. The finance director and I will continue to review um, the uh, article as we approach the uh, town meeting. Article 8, rescind authorization to borrow. There are none that are anticipated at this point in time. Article 9, amending the fiscal year 2023 capital budget. A um, couple of the board members are aware that we had a few issues that came up with regard to shortfalls in funding for projects. A um, couple in the, the Department of Public Works, um, one related to water re rehabilitation, which was an additional request. And then um, a uh, uh, shortfall for a project that's actually state funded um, by the uh, by the school department <coughs> and um, it's kind of hard for me to see here um, but I believe I saw Mr. Kelleher on on the call here Don are you are you there I, I am here yeah. did you want me to go through these or would you like to do so sir well, why don't you go through them like that's fine okay thank you um, so, um, and I'm looking to the members of the Capital Improvement Planning Committee. We had a longer list that was reviewed at a meeting in August, and we have uh, really narrowed it down to sort of the things that we needed to do. Um, and I, I recognize the DPW director for his efforts on that. Um, first is water, uh, water enterprise, uh, water main rehabilitation. Um, many of the residents of town know that we had a significant issue that developed on a section of water main off of North Street on Usually Park, um, over at Usually Park. And the um, water superintendent who is behind me is recommending that we move forward with funding uh, for, I uh, believe, a design for a replacement. Um, does that include construction estimates? Uh, uh, so, so design and construction for an unanticipated water main replacement. This is a water main that failed in two separate spots over a couple of weeks' time. Um, fortunately, we were able to catch that with some help from folks in the neighborhood. That would be an authorization to borrow uh, under the water enterprise. Uh, and then I'm going to take three together. The Water Enterprise replace F-350, the DPW Highway replace F-350, and the School Department van. Those are three vehicle acquisitions, two of which uh, for DPW were previously authorized, and one of which the van, which actually received the state earmarking funding uh, thanks to the work of our legislative delegation, Representative Jones and Senator Tarr. Um, but because of the ever-increasing cost uh, of the purchase of vehicles, from the time the quotes are obtained to the time that the purchase is actually made, we have shortfalls uh, for these three purchases. And so committee's recommending uh, using funding from Water Infrastructure Stabilization Fund and then funding from free cash for those two vehicles in the amount of $23,000, $18,000, $19,000 $19, re respectively. I see I skipped over the dump truck as well, which is another $10,000. This is something that's being experienced by the automotive market. Um, that I think uh, most folks who have been involved in either trying to buy or sell a vehicle are seeing, and it's kind of unfortunately come through to us here. Um, the committee felt that um, it made sense to try to supplement the funding that was previously authorized in order to get these projects off of our um, very long list of capital needs. The final item I'm going to identify is the town roads, $150,000 in free cash. That is a supplement to our town road appropriation intended to keep the financing whole for the pavement management plan. We have two unanticipated uh, issues that have come up that have required us to dip into those funds um, unexpectedly. One is the design work for Culvert over on Chestnut Street that is being uh, designed for replacement. And then the second is for um, both um, some assistance overseeing, um, from an engineering standpoint, the construction over on um, over on the, the Green Street area, as well as additional paving that we were required to do on the very end of Southwick Road, um, adjacent to the paving. Um, we had looked at this and determined that it made sense to try to keep the funding whole so that the Department of Public Works is ready to proceed um, with this paving plan in the spring, prior to the June town meeting, rather than having to wait until the June town meeting. Um, We've had fall capital project requests come up in the past, but not not to not like this. These are supplements to in the, in the case of I think five items uh, existing funding, uh, but uh, it's the, the economic impact being felt unfortunately uh, upon the town itself projects. That's a little unusual, but uh, Mr. Studo, do you want to take Article Seventy Nine to present? Yeah.
Madam Chair, through you, appropriating money for legal expenses, Article 10. Um, the article will provide additional funding for legal expenses relative, related to the secondary school building project. And we are not anticipating requesting additional funding at this point in time. Same is true for Article 11. The balance is just under $100,000. Uh, not anticipating requesting additional funding at this point in time. Article 12, appropriating money for the facilities master plan. This article will provide additional funding to complete the facilities master plan authorized, authorized at a previous time meeting, um, recommending funding amount of $30,000 from free cash. This was what was requested by the facilities master plan committee as well. Mr. Ole, are you okay with those three? Fine, thank you, yep. Article 13, appropriate money for fire station schematic design. The article will provide funding to advance, provide funding to advance the designs for renovations for the fire station through the schematic design phase. We are recommending funding in the amount of $300,000 from free cash as requested by the facilities master plan committee, whose chair, Mrs. Hurlbut, is seated over to my left with the finance director. Again, the funding source recommended to be free cash. Uh, I think we had a good turnout at the open house a couple of Saturdays ago, so we've certainly done a lot through Abby and the committee to try to make folks mm -hmm. aware of this project and what it involves. Mm -hmm. Quite a lot of work has gone into it. This is the next step. Uh, we are fortunate that you know, we expect to have funding on hand to fund this phase of the project, but I do think it's important to note that the next phase, which is probably final design and construction, is one where we'll have to have a serious conversation regarding the funding mechanism because of the likely cost, which is projected at um, 15 to 20 million dollars. Oh, the whole building, yes, but the next phase, it, the next two phases, which would go to our bid documents, um, is under 500. Oh, 500. So you, you expect to take that next chunk independently? And once this is completed. Okay. And they're ready to start working on the schematic designs as soon as town meeting votes to do it. So that's not exactly something they can do in five minutes. And, and the, I, I, you know, the thing about the, and maybe you don't want to hear this now, in which case we can move on. No, it's okay. Uh, but the idea behind the uh, schematic design, which is a term we all hear all the time, but I don't know if anybody realizes what it really means, is digging a lot deeper into the uh, building and the whole process, verifying the spatial relationships that will support the department's operation, developing, uh, development of strengthening the existing structural system. It's looking at everything. I sent you the water report on the building. I don't know if you had a chance to look at it, but it's all those kinds of things. It's looking to see if the steel that was used in the original building, we don't have any structural drawings for the original building. We have the floor plans, but we don't have any of the, uh, mechanical stuff in this and that. So it's it's making sure that the beams that were put in initially are sufficient enough and probably aren't and probably will have to be augmented. And uh, the uh, it also includes a plan and a location for a temporary facility to have some fire station during construction. So it's a fairly extensive process. Okay. Thank you. And I also, you would have received a copy of this, because um, I sent it out to all of the uh, facilities master plan okay. members. We left the who's going to present open on the warrant article, so that's up for grabs. What? <laughs> we left who was going to present open on the warrant article, so that's up for grabs if you're uh, feeling like you want to do a presentation that evening. Yeah, I, I already worked at a brief presentation Wonderful. and we're also going to have all of the boards that were at the firehouse with the um, oh good those will be in the hallway there good we'll also go over to the firehouse on the 16th when they have mm -hmm. their bring the kids and ride a fire truck open the house good. and then after that they'll be installed in the hall in the long hall at, at town hall for, for a while so it'll get lots of coverage. I did see them out uh, the other day at the Apple Fest. They had them out so people could go over there. They had the station open. Yeah. People could go over there. That's good. As more information to be put out, the better. 
All right, thank you, Mrs. Hurlbut. You're welcome. And we have the last article. Article 14, appropriating money for survey and wetland delineation on town-owned land that's located within the affordable housing. Zoning overlay, that's at 57 Haverhill Street, 44 to 46 Oakdale Road, and 7 St. Teresa Street. The article will provide funding to delineate the location of wetlands on the properties. We've also left uh, a buffer in that estimate of $25,000 to allow for surveying and for the potential of drawing of some new lot lines if that's something that the uh, board decides that it wants to do. Um, it's co-sponsored by the Community Planning Commission uh, along with the select board. I, I will note that we uh, have struggled a bit to get estimates from engineering firms. I, I think I heard we were out to six or seven firms at this point and they are very busy. Um, so I just think we need to be cognizant of the timing for this work occurring because of the demand on the market. We are confident in the estimated amount, um, but the field is very busy and most folks probably understand why. Right. All right, I'll do articles, those two. And uh, this is one that harkens back to a couple of meetings ago, uh, to a couple of town meetings ago, so we could want to get that moving along. All right, so now let's take any questions. Do we have anybody here that has any questions with regard to the articles or anybody that's joining us um, remotely that has any questions? I'm not seeing any, Madam Chair. All right, great. Well, thank you. Okay, so we will close that hearing. And now our next uh, order of business is to review the wastewater project presentation. This is uh, a time really far. Uh, we're going to be rolling out multiple public opportunities for question and answer. Um, but we have it on the agenda for purposes of the select board to be able to get us um, uh, more acquainted. The select board, I wasn't there, but the select board did have a meeting, an off off uh, evening meeting um, for a few hours yes. to review this and so but this is a, the first rollout so we won't be taking question and answer on it but for anybody that's here and listening if you did actually have a question on this um, my uh, request to you is to encourage you to send your question to the town administrator so that we can as we roll this out in public hearings have the answer ready for you so, um, but this will be the, you know, we'll, this will be one of many meetings where we will be giving more information. But this is really just for the board's edification um, of the matter and for people that are attending. Mr. Studo. And just to like elaborate in a little bit more detail, besides the four times I think it comes out of this board, there's going to be three outreach that are specific to the public and then three public meetings with finance committee, CPC, and school. So uh, you'll have 10 public ways to ask. So that's why, you know, just to be even more detailed, that it's not just a few more, it's a lot. So thank you. But I, what I would say is, of course, for, for my colleagues or, and for anybody yeah. that's attending, if there are <coughs> questions that come up, send them to Mr. Gilberto so that we can work or, or someone else he's raising his hand. We Don't send a, them. We, we have <laughs> a dedicated Mr. Gilberto. <laughs> no, Don't there's send a them so we, we have a dedicated email address. It's sewer at northreadingma.gov. Perfect. So if there's any question that's Perfect. out there. Okay. Say it again, Mr. Gilberto. Nice sewer. and loud. Sewer at northreadingma.gov. S E W E R. Who's got the pleasure of a link on the website? Yeah, it, there is a link on the website. Perfect. And this, you, this evening's <laughs> presentation will also be posted on the website tomorrow as well uh, so there'll be this this information is going to be widely disseminated after this That's evening's wonderful. presentation so um, I mean the, the, the email goes directly to, to Mr. Parisi if this effort is successful it will be a monumental change so we all recognize and we all have our own questions and we all recognize that many people do have questions so um, please send them to the email and as we move along we'll probably incorporate them into a frequently asked questions sheet all right. And is and uh, is this presentation also uh, on the website tomorrow? Okay. And then is your trash? I meant to ask you. Will you put your trash presentation on your website as well? Oh. Yeah, that would be great. All right. Thank you. Please welcome again. 
Thank you again. So uh, we've got a lot of information on wastewater uh, to get through today. So this is just a, an opening presentation. I'll try to be brief. Uh, and briefly, so a little background here. So October 2021, um, town meeting approved an appropriation of $2,893 uh, to advance the design permitting of, of uh, development full funding plan for wastewater collection system. And that um, area of, of town to, to be served, Main Street, North Street, uh, west of Lowell Road, Park Street, west of Concord Street. And this is the phase one work um, that we're planning for. Phase two would encompass Martin's Pond, specifically the area bounded by Main Street, both sides of Bowers Road, the Wilmington Town Line, and Andover Town Line. While you know, flow required to service this area is accounted for in our planning assumptions, uh, neither construction plans nor growth projections were part of this past year's work. So the town contracted with Wright Pierce to provide preliminary design for proposed municipal wastewater systems and the final design a portion of the, of the system located within the Mass DOT project area of uh, intersection of Route 125 and 114, uh, where Mass DOT is now designed for a drainage improvement and roadway resurfacing project. So we want to basically be prepared and be ready to, you know, install, um, you know, our infrastructure in their work zone at the right time. And then funding is approved. Moving on. So the town is designing a system for wastewater flow of 503,000 gallons per day to accommodate both the phase one and the phase two needs in this area, as well as future new growth needs. The town is also a contract with Kleinfeld to perform a municipal wastewater financial assessment study on the options for financing the estimated project cost of the municipal wastewater system, including growth projections. And a detailed presentation of this information will follow shortly. So word about the route, discussion with the Andover and North Andover have been ongoing. The intended route to convey wastewater via Force Main to the Greater Lawn Sanitary District Wastewater Treatment Plant located in North Andover is to follow Route 28 to Route 125 to Route 114. Andover and North Andover encourage the town to also look at other options for a route from a slightly south of Route 125 intersection with Route 114 to the GLSD. Uh, discussions continue with the two communities regarding the best route to connect to the GLSD from this area, including potential use of existing gravity sewer lines uh, in both of those communities with some upgrading required. So, um, map of the route. So you can see here we in red, we would be going um, from Route 28 along Route 125 to the intersection of 114, all the way up into uh, Lawrence, where there is a uh, interceptor pipe that was built and constructed by uh, Town of Andover, and we would connect into that location. There are other locations we're looking at as well, and that is through um, North Andover and Green, where you can see we would come off of 114, I believe at Waverly, and we would. Um, come into their gravity system and get into the GLSD in a route that's shown there. Another route through Andover that we've um, sort of worked out through discussions with uh, Andover DPW is a route um, on the left side, um, shown in, in a brownish color. It is, again, coming off of uh, Route 125 before reaching the intersection of 114 and um, coming into their gravity system in uh, improving and upgrading some of the lines to get to their pump station uh, at the, the Shawshine pump station um, and we would from there our flows would continue to the interceptor pipe in that um, Lawrence uh, location. So those are the routes uh, out of town, in town we have some wastewater collection um, a wastewater collection system that has a, a series of gravity flow pipes and uh, pump stations and force mains. You can see um, the route as we described before being Route 28, um, North Street and a uh, section of Lowell Road, and also Park Street and Concord Street. There are eight pump stations total. In town you'll see that there is seven. There's one also to be constructed uh, on 125 in Andover. So the um, locations of those pump stations are 
have been worked out in, in some preliminary design, so we're pretty confident that those are the, the right locations, the, the low points, if you will, of the, of the system, and they will pump and convey wastewater um, from in town all the way to the Greater Lawn Sanitary District in North Andover. Summary of the wastewater flows. So total wastewater design permitting flow capacity being sought is 503,000 gallons. We'd reduce that by the existing phase one wastewater flow allocation of 186,000 gallons per day. Reduced again by the phase two Martins Pond wastewater flow reserves of 32,000 gallons per day. We also have to make a reduction for groundwater infiltration allowance of 29,300 gallons per day. In applying a safety factor of 10%, we'd have a reduction uh, of 21,800 gallons per day as well. So when all of those uh, allocations are made, uh, we still have a reserve capacity of a sewer that can be allocated towards new growth in the future of 233,900 gallons per day. So back in 2021, we had a, a cost estimate uh, probable cost estimate for the project. We, um, after having some some funding, the two million eight ninety three uh, approved. We had a balance. It was looking, um, we were looking at that time. That balance being one hundred thirteen million zero one two. So we now have an updated uh, probable cost uh, for twenty twenty two. There have been some you know certain design. Um, changes made and, and determination of exact pump station locations, things of that nature. Uh, there's also been some significant infl uh, inflation as well that we have calculated and brought those construction costs to, to current terms. Um, so sum total, we had, um, we had 113.01 million. We are now at 129.1 million, a difference in an increase of 16.09 million. A pretty clear slide on that. I know we're not, the, I know we're not commenting, stuff, but it's a pretty right, clear right. Slide. So the, yeah, there's, there's certainly some some other information, geotechnical um, information that you know is to be done as well. So here's a slide that is a um, little more information than we had in the previous uh, presentation. But do we have the bonding capacity to borrow the funds needed to construct the project? And uh, Liz, I don't know if you want to speak to this. I, I certainly can continue, but. You can continue, I'll answer any. Uh, okay, very any good. Questions. So uh, we did speak with, um, I guess it was uh, Peter Frazier. Yeah, Hilltop Securities. Hilltop Securities. And uh, so his, the information he provided is what's on the slide. The town's general debt limit consists of a normal debt limit and a double debt limit. The normal debt limit is a 5% of the valuation of taxable property as last equalized by the State Department of Revenue. So the town can authorize uh, debt up to this amount without state approval. It can authorize debt up to twice this amount, the double debt limit, with the approval of the State Municipal Finance Oversight Board, composed of State Treasurer, State Auditor, Attorney General, and Director of Accounts. So there are many categories of general obligation debt which are exempt from and do not uh, go count against the general debt limit. So among others, these exempt categories include certain school bonds, self-supporting sewer bonds, water bonds, bonds for electric, gas, and community antenna uh, television systems, and telecommunications systems bonds, and solid waste disposal facility bonds. So, the town's current debt limit is 180 million 383 440, and which, with state approval, the debt the debt limit can be raised to 367 6688. The outstanding debt and debt authorization, but not yet issued, subject to the debt limit, is 15 million 077369, leaving additional borrowing capacity of 165 million 306070 under the normal debt limit in 345,689,510 under the double debt limit. So the bottom line is that the town has ample capacity under the statutory debt limit to authorize future capital projects that are subject to the debt limits. However, the, this capacity should not be confused with the town's ability to support the payment of additional debt service with the town's Proposition 2.5 levy limit 
or the need for additional revenue betterment, assessment revenues, or debt exclusion revenues. So I'll pause there if there's any questions on this particular slide. You keep going. That's right. okay. So um, the Municipal Wastewater System Financial Assessment Study. So we are undergoing a study um, to, to see exactly what our options are for uh, financing the wastewater system. So we have, and, uh, and there's more to come on this, I'll just quickly say part one, um, being the municipal wastewater system cost and financing analysis, and included some GIS mapping of the proposed service areas, performing, you know, uh, averaging of water, actual water use to help uh, understand the flows and the needs and how to allocate costs um, of the sewer system. Confirming the adequacy of the 503,000 gallons per day for the annual sewer discharge permit and provide some of the assessment methods, develop wastewater system project financing models, uh, assist with draft uh, sewer betterment assessment bylaws, and presenting uh, all of this information uh, to you here. In part two, uh, we are uh, asking them to perform a potential build-out analysis, conduct public outreach, uh, solicit survey data from property owners, businesses, develop a matrix of potential property development. We want uh, uh, to see some recommendations, uh, if any, for zoning regulation changes that may uh, help promote uh, the desired development in town. Uh, that would be dependent upon you know, the sewer that's to be constructed. So we'd evaluate potential real estate market value increases and new growth tax dollars, calculate a return on investment over a 30-year debt service payment period, Provide public outreach meetings, assistance during outreach meetings with property owners, businesses, and with the general public. And again, present all of this information to you here tonight. So, um, we are um, working out and, and have a draft schedule of public outreach events. So, we're looking at the first uh, event to be Tuesday, October 11th, an in person community workshop in the evening. We'll continue on uh, to have another one Wednesday, October 19th in the, in the, evening, in the uh, daytime hours. And then Tuesday, October 25th, we want to target you know, businesses to come to this particular workshop, um, really get into some details on, on what it means to the businesses. Tuesday, November 15th, wrapping up you know, our outreach events, and I think hopefully at that point we have maybe some more concrete information that we can provide yeah, the residents and businesses. And that is it. Madam Chair, through you, that schedule that Mr. Parisi just showed is based off of a projected December 5th town meeting. I know there was some conversation about either November 14th or December 5th. At this stage, the, I think the working group felt that this timeline for a town meeting um, might be a bit more manageable to allow for the appropriate outreach to take place. So we'll be working through with regard to firming up the venue um, at the middle high school um, for this. So I just want to note that for the board. Okay. Thank you. Thanks. Mm. Thank you for the presentation. Mrs. Hurlbut, you need to send your questions to the <laughs> sewer email. So could you go back one slide, please? <laughs> so the, the questions or comments on this slide have not been answered as yet. And it says summer or have they? Can, uh, can you point that? All of these Both questions, build out analysis, public outreach, matrix of potential property. Those are all things that came out in the reports, right? Correct. You, you were just reviewing what you've done so far, phase right. one and phase two. Right, right. So that's, that, that's the information that will be following as soon as I leave this podium. Right. That's fine. Thank you. I think you would just, because you had that graph. So I think he was just telling us all the steps that he'd been through already. Yeah. Now, with these four meetings, it's going to yield all that information for him to be presented. <laughs> to, to be presented. <coughs> all right, that was great. Thank you. Thank you. Um, thank you for that. Do we have another presentation on we this? We do, yes. Yeah. 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 Um, yeah. Good evening, everyone. Good evening. Hermona with Kleinfelder. How's everybody Hi. doing? Nice. <laughs> nice to have you here. Go ahead, Mr. Can you hear me? Yes, Megan. Yeah. One comment I just want to make as well. This presentation, I think that uh, there's a lot of information, and Megan's going to go through it again 
That's why we're stressing all the other meetings we're having because the first time we heard it, it took three and a half hours. We will not be spending three and a half hours on it tonight. But again, there's a lot of info and besides the sewer email, there's gonna be, uh, I thought six, sorry, I misspoke. There's gonna be seven more opportunities outside of the four on the select board to talk about it. So I just want to stress that because it is, there's going to be a lot of info coming up. I just wanted to warn everyone. Yeah. And again, this was, this is more for the first time where, or the second time the board is seeing this. Um, but it's more for getting this information out there. People will have questions. People will have comments that we're encouraging people. This, this evening's meeting is not for that. This evening's meeting is for get rolling the information out as well as getting the, the sewer sewer at North Reading talk out email out for those types of questions or also of course come into the coming to those informational sessions and asking them there. There'll be ability to ask those at those in, in person and assuming they're going to be broadcast virtually as well. So if people can't necessarily make it in person there'll be a broadcast of it. So all right, thank you. Welcome. And thank you very much. Megan, if you can hear me, can you please, can you share your screen? We can't see it. Yes. So um, I'll share one second because in anticipation of all these meetings, I have pre-recorded my voiceover onto the slides again here to interject if anything doesn't work properly. If this is the first time that we played with that recording. So um, if you cannot hear the recording as the presentation begins, please let me know and I will work to adjust it or go through the slides. So, so that, that so that would mean there would be no no we shouldn't ask questions during the presentation is that correct? All right. Correct. Okay. Yeah, I thought it. Okay. To the end. Great. Um, Let's start doing that for the meetings. No. <laughs> we can't do that. We can't. Here we go. Conducted by Clan Felder for the town of North Reading, proposed by Clan Felder, Michael Lewis,
Why do we need public sewers in the first place? As a reminder, there are several benefits of municipal sewers, including economic and resi residential growth, as well as to improve public health and protect the environment from the impacts of failed septic systems. We will touch on the economic growth and housing potentials in part three of this presentation. Additional resources will be made available on the town's website. This financial assessment that we are presenting today explores the long-term financing of the proposed sewer project. This study does not evaluate cash flow, but is meant to identify what funding mechanisms will look like over the life of the loan and what financial benefits the town may see from building sewers. Part one of the study was conducted by Kleinfelder and includes GIS mapping, water usage analysis, wastewater capacity analysis, and the betterment assessment that we will discuss today. Part two was conducted by our subconsultant FXM and goes into a build-out analysis, zoning recommendations, and evaluating the potential new growth revenue from growth associated to the development of sewers. For our analysis, we are focusing on the parcels highlighted here in pink. Before going into those details, some general definitions to get everyone up to speed. A betterment is a special property tax assessed to parcels that receive a benefit or advantage from the construction of a public improvement. In this case, all parcels abutting the proposed service will be assessed by the Betterment will be broken down into identifying general benefit facilities, such as pumping stations and force space, versus special benefits, such as main serving a specific population. This will come up again when we go over cost allocation. Yeah. It is also important to note that a betterment is a municipal lien on a property. This lien can be paid at the time of assessment or over the length of the bonding period, but it must be paid in full when the property is sold. Ultimately, a town meeting and vote must occur to create a benefit. During this meeting, the betterment vote must decide on the following issues. First, the authorization to borrow money for the project. Second, the amount of construction costs to be collected through betterments. Third, the method to assess betterments. And fourth, the interest surcharge to be added by the town, which is allowed to be up to 2% over the borrowing interest rate. We will focus now on the first three decision points to be made by the town. Project cost allocation, betterment methodology, loan period, and interest rate. The cost used to determine betterment assessments is based on a portion of the total eligible cost of the project. The select board will vote to determine the division of costs, and final betterment will be determined upon completion of the project once costs are finalized. Now we will take a closer look at how the costs are distributed under our base model assumption. 129.1 million dollars of the total project costs are considered eligible for the betterment assessments, as $2.893 million has already been allocated. Other revenue sources can be applied upfront or used to cover general fund obligations over time. As I mentioned earlier, eligible costs to be assessed may be divided into general benefit facilities and special benefit facilities. General benefit facilities include wastewater conveyance and connection to the Greater Lawrence Sanitary District, as well as land acquisition and administrative fees. From there, the general benefit facilities cost is divided based on anticipated sewer demand, 40% of which is estimated for phase one, and 60% which is reserved for future connections. When you add special benefits to the general benefits to be assessed as betterments, this totals approximately $69 million, of which there are exempt costs and collectible costs. Here, there are three town, state, or federally owned parcels within the project area, which cannot be collected as betterments. These exempt parcels account for $0.4 million of the betterment share. The final betterment will be determined following the betterment determination process. This includes several decision points along the way, including establishing alternative revenue sources, determining eligible project costs, determining the cost distribution between general and special benefits, assigning a portion of general benefit facility costs to be assessed as betterments, 
selecting a betterment methodology, and calculating final betterments once project costs are finalized. These decision points will impact the general fund obligation as well as the residential and commercial and industrial betterments. For example, an increase in alternative revenue sources will decrease the obligation to all three, while a decrease in project costs to be assessed as betterments will increase the obligation to the general fund while decreasing the benefits to residential and commercial users within the first project area. Decreasing special benefits and decreasing percent general benefits to be assessed as benefits follows the same pattern. Next, we will take a dive into the betterment assessment methodology, go through an example betterment calculation, and review the betterment determination process. Based on Mass General Law, we will be using the Unit Uniform Method, which is based on dividing costs between existing and potential residential equivalent sewer units based on existing zoning. Or, to put it simply, flow from a single family residential home <coughs> is equivalent to one sewer unit. Equivalent sewer units are based on estimated wastewater contributions. We looked at three methods to determine what wastewater contribution might be expected. Water use method, Title V current build method, and Title V full build out method. Of these, we found the first two most applicable to the town of North Reading. <coughs> From these methods, the cost per sewer unit is ultimately determined as the total betterment assessment cost divided by the total number of sewer units. Here we will look at an example parcel and use the first two methods to determine its number of equivalent sewer units. For this example, we have one water account, including a highway business office space with 10 units inside of the building on a lot of 43,560 square feet with an existing building size of 15,000 square feet. For the water use method, the number of sewer units is equal to the water use divided by the equivalent sewer units flow. In this case, based on historical water use in the town of North Reading, 130 gallons per day is the average single family home water use. So for this parcel, assuming they use 415 gallons per day, their number of sewer units would become three. The Title V current build method is a little more complicated but is looking at potential use based on the current footprint of the property. So to determine the number of sewer units, we look at the existing building area times the projected Title V flow divided by the equivalent sewer units. In this case, the equivalent sewer units is 330 gallons per day as projected by Title V for a single family residential home. In our example parcel, a 15,000 square foot parcel divided by 1,000 square feet times 75 gallons per day for projected sewer flows of an office space divided by 330 gallons per day as equivalent sewer units results in 3.5 sewer units for this particular parcel. As a reminder, we will continue to use the base model assumptions throughout this presentation which is based off the water use method. A 30 year loan period, 5% interest rate, and no residential opt out. To compare the two methodologies, let's look at the distribution of parcels under current zoning. Currently in the project area, approximately 80% of the parcels are residential, 1% mixed use, 13% commercial, 4% industrial, and 0.2% exempt. Compare this to the estimated betterment distribution by type. The water use method is highlighted in blue, where 61% is taken up by residential, 22% by commercial, and 6% by industrial. Under the Title V current build method, this drops down to 56% for residential, increases to 28% for commercial, and stays about the same at 6% for industrial users. Here is that same information presented in a slightly different way. As you can see, method choice has a slight impact 
on how the betterment costs are distributed. This takes us back to our first couple of slides where we look at the water use method in particular for our universal base model. Again, this equates to approximately $46,000 for the single family home, $35,000 for condo owners, and a range of costs based on historical water use for commercial, industrial, and mixed use properties. If paid over the life of the loan, this equates to $250 for single family homes, $190 for condo owners, and a range of values based on water use for all other parcel types. That, we will move on to part three of our agenda, where we will evaluate debt planning, property valuation, new growth analysis, and return on investment. This part of the presentation looks at the last four decision points to be made by the town. A residential opt-out option, allowable residential and commercial growth, tax rate adjustments, and other revenue source numbers. What is a residential opt-out? It goes back to how the costs are divided on our project cost allocation flowchart. With the residential opt-out, residents in the sewer district would not be required to pay a benefit until the time they decide to connect into the system. This shifts more of the initial project cost onto the general fund. With no residential opt-out, as we discussed early in the presentation, the average residential annual tax increase is approximately $660. This assumes that all betterments are paid over 30 years at 5% interest rate and no alternative revenues are applied. Under those same assumptions, here we compare the different variations of residential opt-out and how that impacts the average annual residential tax increase. So at no opt-out, we have $660 per year. At 25% opt-out, $760 per year. 50% opt-out, $880 per year, and at 100% opt-out in the Phase 1 sewer area would be $1,080 per year. These are approximate estimates based on the given conditions and would change over time as more users connect to the system. Here is what that means for non-sewer residents. An average monthly tax increase ranging from $55 to $90 or an annual cost increase of $660 to $10,080, again, for the average single family home. For sewage residents, the total monthly cost comes to $305, which includes the average monthly tax increase plus the monthly betterment cost at 0% residential opt-out, totaling an annual cost of approximately $3,660. At 100% residential opt-out, if a user would like to tie in, this equates to $340 per month, or $4,080 per year. Now we will take a closer look at the economic benefits of sewer. This is part two of the financial assessment, which includes property evaluation and potential new growth analysis. FXM, a subconsultant of Kleinfelder, was provided a scope to answer the question, what is the potential new growth, and what are the potential financial benefits related to this growth? FXM projected commercial, industrial, and multifamily residential growth in the sewer district based on projected demand in surrounding sewer towns, such as Andover, North Andover, and Reading. Based on their assumptions of a constant tax rate of $15 per $1,000 evaluation, they concluded that there is sufficient demand within the market area to absorb the projected commercial square footage potential, as well as the number of units projected for multifamily housing. If you take a look at the summary on the left-hand side, you will see the projections that FSM found for potential increase in value of existing properties, totaling $190 million increase in value of existing properties. For net new growth, they determined a potential for 2.6 million square feet of retail and industrial flex, as well as office space, which translates to $13.5 million in tax revenues, is kept at a constant rate of $15 per $1,000 evaluation at a $902.5 million evaluation for new growth. On the right-hand side, the summary of findings 
for multifamily residential development includes a projection for an additional 1,300 units over the next 30 years, equating to another $10.5 million in tax revenue if at a constant rate of $15 per $1,000 valuation. These numbers are what we used in the future slides to consider 100% residential growth potential and 100% commercial growth potential. We will use these projections to determine an estimated return on investment. The return on investment is the dollars returned to the community divided by the dollars invested into the project. The goal is to have dollars returned greater than or equal to the dollars invested. There are a couple of ways to look at the invested dollars and how to repay them. First, there is revenues from betterment an existing property value increase tax levy, which are monies that come from existing properties. Next, there is residential new growth tax levy and commercial new growth tax levy, which comes from future development. Finally, there are alternative revenue sources and income sales. To avoid increasing general tax rates, you need to increase the dollars in and decrease the dollars out. I think that ends my pre-recorded slides, but I'll do this now in person and it goes back to the right slide. Let's see. Wait one second. Um, so for the ROI based on assumptions, I don't know how to keep it on one slide. So for the ROI based model assumptions, we're again looking at a $132 million project cost with $69 million assessed as betterments under the water use method. The town is projecting a 30-year loan repayment period from 2027 to 2057 at a 5% interest rate. Projected new growth is evenly distributed over those 30 years for our evaluation, and 0% residential opt-out is used. For the tax rate, it starts at $15 per year per $1,000 evaluation, and that includes a prop 2.5 increase in prior year tax levy over the 30 years. No alternative revenues are included. So looking at this table of ROI, we start at the bottom. If we look at 100% of the potential residential and 100% of the potential commercial growth, that would equate to approximately $441 million over 30 years in new growth related tax revenue contributing attributed to sewers or an ROI of 3.3. Um, working backwards at smaller percentages of potential growth based on what the sewer the town would like to see, I believe the break-even point is at approximately 35% residential and 35% commercial potential growth projections. So this kind of gives the town an idea of what type of growth could occur and how much revenue may come from that growth. Just as a reminder, the financial planning is a balancing act, so there's a balance between the burden on the general funds, the burden on residents and sewer districts, the burden on the commercial and industrial users in the sewer district, as well as looking at the borrowing rates and the impact on bond rating, the desired residential growth, and desired commercial growth. And as Mr. Creasy presented in the beginning, there will be additional follow-up workshops um, and more information will be provided on the town's website. Um, hopefully I'll see you at one of those workshops if you have questions, but I think that is all for what we are presenting today. Thank, thank you. Thanks, Megan. Great, thank you. Okay. All right, thanks a lot for your presentation. Madam Chair, through you, so this presentation will be put up on the town website uh, tomorrow, as I indicated, and we'll post that through town news and on our uh, social media pages as well, so folks will be able to go and review it. Um, and as was indicated, there are multiple information sessions that are upcoming um, that we will be c reaching out to residents through social media, through the newspaper, through the website, and through a reverse 911 as well to let folks know that the opportunities to learn more about the project. Yeah, I know we're not supposed to be questioning or commenting, but for the return on investment portion, I think if that were fleshed out more so people understood one of the, one of the purposes <coughs> of the study was to understand 
you know, it's precisely what development could be ushered in based on this change or, you know, potential zoning, zoning changes and that may be ahead of what the purpose of this is, but I think people are, are going to want to know that, where they derive those figures from what specific type of development, assuming there's going to be housing, more housing, or more housing complexes, and more business and business complexes and things like that along these routes. And also, you know, single family has the potential to develop into other things if we do you know, zoning changes to complement the bringing the sewer sewer line in there, right? So, something of that nature, I think, to get people understanding the broader impact of it is, you know, you know, you may not always have a single family. You may be able to develop it into a three family, or you may be able to develop it into a mixed use retail parcel, depending on the space that you have there. So. Um, I think fleshing that out on, on the return on investment is going to be important for us to, to know. Yeah. Madam Chair, there are two reports that were done that support that information with regard to the growth potential Great. Um, for the board members. I believe they're in the share file folder on wastewater, but I'll send out the information okay. as well. Great. And we'll also put that information up on the website. Maybe make too. a slide out of it for, sure. the, for the public informational hearing and meetings. Sure. All right, thank you so much. That was uh, really informative. All right, we're going to move. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Joe. Thanks, Susan. Thank you so much. We're going to move along to, uh, you know, next order of business, which is a show cause here, and this seems to just, we're just going to keep this on our agenda permanently. Huh, Mr. Gilberto? Wait, Madam Chair, through, we don't need to because we were informed by the ABCC. <laughs> Uh, either late yesterday or early today that uh, they had approved the transfer to the new operator. So I provided Mr. Wallner a new motion um, which would resolve this issue and allow all parties to move on. Mr. Wallner, do we have a motion? Madam Chair, I move to recommend... Can oh, no, not that one. No, that one. Yeah. Sorry. It's at the, in the, the stack I put in the folder at the back, the very back. It is coconut milk, turmeric, ginger, and I mean everything this thing's close. Uh, <laughs> Madam Chair, I move that in light of the select board's previous approval of the transfer of license located at 202 North Street to Aria and Julia Incorporated doing business as Route 28 Lucky Mart and the Alcoholic Beverage Control Commission subsequent approval of the transfer. The board take no action relative to the license previously issued to smokes and snacks doing business as Route 28 Lucky Mart. Second. Motion by Mr. Walmer, second by Mr. O'Leary. <coughs> Any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. It's unanimous. All right. Next order of business, ratify the memorandum of agreement with the North Reading Library Staff Association. I believe there's uh, also a motion with that same previous motion, Mr. Walmer. Yeah, that's right. Um, uh, Madam Chair, I move to ratify and sign the memorandum of agreement between the Town of North Reading and the North Reading Library Staff Association, ATF, MA, AFL-CIO for the term effective July 1, 2021 through June 30, 2024. Second. Motion by Mr. Walner, second by Mr. O'Leary. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. It's unanimous. And thank you to the union team and the management team and our, our two board liaisons for getting that taken care of and, and uh, pulled together. Legal bills, we're keeping you on your toes, Mr. Walner. Madam Chair, I move to approve legal bills for August 2022 in the amount of dollars as follows. Oh, did I miss you? Yeah, you skipped the result. Can I, can, I, can I get some people on the ZBA before we do the legal? Oh, yeah, I already checked that out. <laughs> Let's do legal bills and then okay. we'll go back to a point. I'm sorry. <laughs> okay. I, for some reason, I, I don't have my glasses tonight, so uh, that's why I check. I just <laughs> I check off. I'll repeat. Uh, for KP Law, I move to approve legal bills for August 2022 in the amount of dollars as follows: general, uh, $6,178.60; labor, $787.50; 20 Elm Street, $165 for a total of $7,131.36. Second. Motion by Mr. Walner, second by Mr. O'Leary. Any further discussion? All those in favor? <coughs> Aye. Aye. 
Okay, and then Jams, uh, Madam Chair, I move to approve legal bills in the amount of $2,850 for judicial arbitration and mediation services incorporated for mediation of the secondary school building project. Second. <coughs> Motion by Mr. Walner, second by Mr. O'Leary. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. All right, now shall we go back to appointments? Yep. We need some appointments to the Zoning <coughs> Board of Appeals. Um, Mr. Do we have a motion, Mr. Walner? I still, I just have to get, I have to give the names to Mr. Walner. No, so he's gonna, oh, everybody, yeah. everybody on the list gets listed the in the okay, motion, and then, and then oh, yeah. you make a and recommendation. We'll, we'll yeah. call for your recommendation <coughs> as a liaison. Excuse me. Madam <laughs> Chair, I move to nominate the following individual, individual to the Zoning <laughs> Board of Appeals for a term to expire December 31, 2024. <laughs> Hold individuals, on. that's correct. It, individuals. It's written, it's written okay. in the singular, it should be plural. Okay. I'll just read that again. I move to nominate the following individuals to the Zoning Board of Appeals for a term to expire December 31, 2024. Maria Lockhart, who's the current associate. Rebecca Griffin. Thomas Kis Kis Kisilak. John Berangia. Uh, Brendan Riley. Nathaniel Schomp. William Brickmeyer. Michelle Bodian. Peter <coughs> Stephen Coriel. Second. Motion by Mr. Walner, second by Mr. O'Leary, and we'll hear from the liaison. Um, in, in consultation with uh, the chair, uh, Ms. Pratt, Jennifer Pratt, we, uh, we recommend Maria Lockhart to go from a current associate member to a um, full member. Uh, you know, it's a uh, I've seen that that's one place where consistency is key, and you know she's, you know, followed along, and uh, I mean, definitely, um, definitely always had some good questions, that, you know, that she asked. So that's uh, that's a recommendation to the board. <coughs> Maria Lockhart. Correct. Just a, should we be waiving policy? Yeah, I was just gonna bring yeah. that. Oh, excuse me. Yeah, okay. you want me to comment on why we're doing that? You, you, you can. I want you go. Either way, no. I, just Madam Chair, three the board members are all well aware we do have a policy with regard to appointments which uh, requires generally a 30-day uh, notice period of advertising for vacancies. The vacancies that we're acting on this evening have come up somewhat urgently um, and we've we previously talked with town council with regard to how to handle that matter. The board's vote to make an appointment is implicitly a waiving uh, of the policy but I do want to flag for the record that we are recommending this. We did advertise these vacancies as soon as they became available both in the transcript <coughs> and on the website and through social media. And we got quite a turnout in terms yes. of response, as you saw here. But I just want to note for the record, we don't normally make appointments in this sh short window, and there will be vacancies left on this board after tonight's actions as well. I do want to stress that as well. Yeah. Um, but I, I know that, you know, I want the board members to be aware of that as they're taking their votes. So are we, Mr. So, so should we entertain a motion to waive that policy? I mean, we have an associate member that is already serving, so. But then I'm going to nominate the associate member as well. Next. So shall we? Should do? Are we required to take a motion? Yeah, policy yeah. isn't really our. It's not a. It's a. I mean, it's good to follow it, of course. The town council has previously indicated that the board's vote to appoint is implicitly a, a waiver of the policy. So it's it's the board's. Oh, pleasure. Yeah, okay, yeah. It's the board's right. pleasure, though. If the sure. board wishes to vote, no, we can. I think that's your. Yeah. But I do think we should state it. That so yeah, it would historically, we would normally take a, a motion to waive policy, as a matter of course. Uh, but if the record just were to show that, you know, because of the urgency of uh, the situation, that this vote is um, intended to reflect a, waive, a waiving of the policy, and we're going to make the appointments. Okay. It's so noted. All right. So we have a motion on the floor by Mr. Walner, a second by Mr. O'Leary. The liaison is recommending Maria Lockhart for to move mm -hmm. from the associate's position into a member position and um, do and this would be a, although we have a list of names and nomination this would be a roll call vote do we have any further discussion mr o'leary maria lockhart mr walner maria lockhart mrs gonzalez maria lockhart mr studo maria lockhart and man <coughs> kelly's maria lockhart which is a unanimous vote and are we, do we have other appointments to the zoning board? Yes, one more. Um, Madam Chair, I move to nominate the following individual 
to the Zoning Board of Appeals for an associate term to expire December 31, 2022. So let me just, just for clarity's sake, we're putting the following individuals, plural, names into nomination, but we're only choosing one uh, individual or, you know, we, as a, after we hear from the liaison's recommendation, we can vote for any, any one of these that we so choose, but, okay, so, uh, Mr. Walner, I didn't mean to interrupt you, but I did, so I apologize again. I did it twice to you now, so okay. go ahead. <laughs> so um, uh, the associates' names are Rebecca Griffin, Thomas Kisselak, John Berengia, Brendan Riley, Nathaniel Champ, William Berkmeyer, Michelle <coughs> Bullion, Peter Brennan, Stephen Correa. Second. Motion by uh, Mr. Walner, second by Mr. O'Leary, and we'll hear from the liaison on an associate member recommendation. After consultation with Chair Jennifer Pratt, we agree that Michelle Bowden. Um, Ms. Bowden is an attorney. She has extensive experience in uh, land use CBA. She used to be a land use attorney for the state of Massachusetts. So, I mean, I, I couldn't have pretty much written up that resume any better for what fits there. And uh, Jennifer spoke to her and she uh, agrees. And um, I would, we would have liked to make another one, but it just, I mean, we literally got all of this like Friday afternoon and like didn't, did, yeah. So it was like, uh, you know, it, it's hard to get in touch with everybody and you know, with everything that happened. So, but, um, but I'm hoping in our next meeting to have at least one more name for the associate, but that's my recommendation for tonight, Michelle Bodian. It's great to see such a, a grouping. We don't <coughs> usually see that. Though. And also, I like to note for the record, um, you know, every everyone has a nomination, but uh, what's nice about it is they, uh, for at least half, who are not going to get nominated if they don't, they already they also expressed interest in other committees, with the that's exception right. of one gentleman that expressed. Uh, interest in the CPC, he's going to have to advertise that one a little bit better. We can't really put him on that. But uh, other than that, though, it seems like they're, we're going to be able to place most of these people in something if they great. choose to, which is great. Great. <laughs> All right. So the liaison's recommendation is Michelle Bodian. Any further discussion? It's a roll call vote. Mr. O'Leary. Michelle Bodian. Mr. Walner. Michelle Bodian. Mrs. Gonzalez. Michelle Bodian. Mr. Studo. Michelle Bodian. Mi and Manny Pelli is Michelle Bodian. Madam Chair. Sure. Uh, also, I I'm not sure if we have to wait. However, uh, Mr. Breen did resubmit to re up his term. Okay. Um, we just got that news like today. So I, we don't have a motion. I don't, I don't know if we can. We wait. You do those in December. We'll just wait. Okay. I, I didn't know how, that, how those work. So. But at least it's good. He's right. Like, you know, we're not going to. We have some time. Not much, no. but we have some time. <laughs> yeah, all right. Yes, all right. Hall. Okay, that's. Are we, are we all set with those? We're, yes. Are we on to town <laughs> administrator's report? Or am I skipping anything? No, no, we're there. You can all skip right. number 12 if you want, but you guys might can talk. Town administrator's <laughs> report is the next order of business. Go ahead, Mr. Gilberto. Thank you, Madam Chair. I, I don't have a formal written report this evening as there was a, a lot going on coming into uh, tonight's agenda and we've got through a lot of it very quickly. Um, one thing I just do want to call to the board's attention, uh, which you already know, um, we have had some turnover in the fire department with um, one retirement uh, over the course of uh, the uh, last fiscal year and now um, two more that happened over the summer that you're aware of and, uh, and uh, another that we've been notified of and the firefighters are also retiring so we'll have four vacancies and I, I want the board to know that I'm working with the fire chief, the public safety director, the human resources director and the police uh, chief public safety director with regard to filling those vacancies. Um, it's a lot of openings to have at once and I know the department is working hard to make sure the shifts are, are filled um, it's going to create um, a situation where we may need to take a, a bit of a different approach in hiring than we've normally taken, and we'll provide more information to the board as we go through that. I know I had mentioned you know, that this was something we were working on over the summer, but it's, you know, it's kind of coming to a point where we'll be, be looking to make those appointments uh, in short order, um, and, and including potentially making appointments of 
firefighters who are not paramedics, which is not something we've done um, in past years, but uh, something we may need to consider at this point. So I just kind of put that out there as something we're working on and um, we'll continue to work forward on. Thank you. That's all, Madam Chair. To make the appointment conditional upon their getting the proper certification within a certain amount of months. You know. we're, we're looking at it into all the options, yeah. Any other, any questions for Mr. Gilberto? <clears throat> all set? Board member reports, and we'll do old and new too, like we typically do. Mr. O'Leary? Uh, first of all, I know all of us are concerned because we probably know people that are down there in, in Florida right now that's uh, experiencing the. Uh, the devastation which was taking place in the news reports have been awful mm -hmm. as to what's occurring. It's a, it's a, uh, a storm like they've never seen before down there, and again, it's going to be traveling up to other southern states too. So, um, you know, so I, again, I know our concerns and the thoughts are, are with those people, and I, I don't know what we can do about it, um, but uh, I know that the federal government can, and I think uh, resources from the state will probably be going down there to assist too, and that's, that's important. Um, but I know I have uh, friends and, and relatives down there right now that are just uh, had to go from the first floor to the third floor, and their, uh, their automobiles are underwater, floating. So it's, you know, it's, it's, it's bad, and it's not even close to being over yet. Uh, additionally, uh, we had uh, an incident that I was aware of, and they're very, right after it occurred, over on Lindor Road, where a uh, a huge tree fell on a, on a home, a friend's home over there. Um, substantial amount of damage, and the fire department responded, as well as uh, fire police and uh, uh, building commissioner, electrical inspector. Um, significant amount of damage to the home, but the, I can't uh, uh, say enough about the professionalism of our of our employees, particularly the public safety personnel, fire department, police department. Uh, that was shown there. Uh, Building commissioner again came out. This was Friday evening, and uh, our electrical inspector was out there, and they were out there over the weekend too, uh, making sure that the property was safe and able for people to stay there. Um, but again, not just the professionalism that was expressed, what they do, but uh, the empathy and the concern that was genuine, genuinely uh, shown to the uh, uh, residents here in North Reading. Uh, while we expect it, they do go above and beyond. And again, they spent uh, the weekend there, going in and out, and they did a fantastic job. And I know that the uh, people affected by it are, are greatly appreciative uh, of their efforts. Uh, the other thing is, um, just a little update on Hillview. Um, the new uh, person that's in there operating is doing very well. They have a, a lot of functions coming and going in there, which is terrific. Uh, they will be coming before the board for a couple of things. Uh, in the not too distant future. Uh, one is they're looking to run a uh, community New Year's Eve party there, but in order to do that, they may be looking to extend the hours an extra hour. Uh, we're looking into how that has to be done, whether the board has to take action or not. In years past, the ABCC has just done a card plunge. Anybody who has a license can extend an additional hour, but because of the pandemic, they have not done it for the last two years. They may not, so we may have a request, and whatever that uh, methodology it has to be followed be presented with a, a plan and uh, hopefully we can act favorably on that because again they're looking to engage the community more with the facility and they're doing a fantastic job. Additionally they're looking to um, reopen the pub area uh, pub in April so at the time if they re renew their, their license it will include a pub and they're looking to do more on-site um, preparation of foods there themselves, hiring on staff rather than using a catering firm now. So things are really looking up. Uh, nice. It seems to be a very good fit uh, for the facility in relation to the types of functions that they run. And uh, the commission is extremely uh, uh, pleased with the way that they've progressed thus far. Uh, we still have a couple little hurdles to get over for, uh, uh, through the uh, health department and the fire department, which we're working through. Um, but things are, things are looking good. And, uh, and again, as you may be aware, um, because of the drought, um, Hillview did experience you know, some difficulty in relation to uh, having enough water for irrigation. So they're going to be looking at uh, potentially um, sinking deeper wells. They have their own well system there, or purchasing water. But we'll update you as that goes along so that they can adjust uh, to meet the needs of 
keeping the course in decent shape so that the revenues won't, won't suffer. Um, so again, kudos to the commission to how they've been handling the situation. They've been keeping us well informed and uh, as we move forward, we'll keep you informed. Okay. With that, we're all set. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you. I was surprised on Saturday to see musical equipment out front, which means they had a wedding going on. Yeah. So it was like, well, wow, it's actually back in business again. Yeah. I was kind of no, surprised doing this it, quick. And, and again, they're enthusiastic. Uh, they've, they've been investing in the facility, so their own money up, some more upgrades, different things. They're, they're doing a great job. Yeah, it seems to be working very well. Okay, great. so now that we have the new public services director here, a lot of things that I've been kind of sitting on, I, I now have a partner, I would guess, she doesn't know that, but I guess I'm gonna come at her is to review some of the things I've been working on. So for example, I drafted up, I've been talking about us consolidating all our transportation into one committee. I've drafted that up, I'll review that with her, to bring it to the board's attention when I think we've got it together. And uh, you know, um, that'd be a new one that we'd be doing. Um, I brought up the topic of creating a volunteer engagement committee to her. That seemed to be, she was very in tune with that, understood why we needed it. So again, I'll draft that up, probably do that with her, bring it to the board's attention. Um, I'm sitting on the marketing campaign for the Stay in Your Home, Stay in Your Community, where she'll put together all the tax aid that we have for the people who are challenged to live in their homes. So again, I'll go to her to do that with her, come back to you with a marketing campaign before we um, implement on the town websites. Michael's already given me <coughs> heads up to be able to go to all the different departments, suck up some of their time so we can get the word out. But before we do that, I want to make sure we have our story right, we have the right theme going, and we can get the word out in a concise uh, fashion. Um, and uh, same with the Commission on Disability. Uh, Ms. Hartman's already come to see us, and uh, I'll be working on, you know, we'll be working on the website thing. And that group has really become very active, which hasn't been active for years. Uh, we have a lot of people who are on fire and um, it's going to bring another segment of our town together to get resources and services that are people. So, um, I don't know, good things down that path is what I'm working on. But I'll do that, you know, with her as well. Okay. Great. Thank you, Mr. Wong. Mrs. Gonzalez? Um, so, I was out of town last week and wasn't able to attend Town Day or Apple Festival, so I they were great. Than somebody else, yeah. So you'll report on that. I would. Were you apple pie? Testing? No, I was also. I thought that was a family no. wedding. So oh. new judges. Wow. Okay. Yeah. That was sorry. It, to it, very that. disappointing that I wasn't able to <coughs> taste the apple pie <laughs> this year. Yeah. Hey. Um, other than that, no, I. Trudeau. Since everything I work on is a hearing every other week. Until sewer is over, I probably will not have a board member report because we're going to have two hours of it. So, uh, but no. Besides that, I um, no, I have nothing to report. It is pretty exciting to see that um, coming to now, moving forward. So we've talked about it for so 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 long, but to now just see some concrete action and things coming actually coming to fruition is pretty amazing. Just want to note that the passing of Patricia Chango, who I knew as Miss Pat, and when we came into this community and we were enrolling our little little babies in Cozy Corner, most of us knew her as Miss Pat. She's a lovely, lovely person, um, kind of a community fixture. We know her daughter is here. She, her daughter works here. Her son-in-law, also worked here at the fire department. So just a, a wonderful family, wonderful woman. So we send our condolences to her, to her family, keep her, her family in our prayers. Um, and also I did, on a happier note, go to the, um, both of those, at Apple Fest and, and the uh, town day. I happened to have a singer that was at both of those oh. events. The band was there, the, the, um, a cappella group was there. Rob from Norcam, I think, was the judge of the apple pie. But it was great. I haven't been there since the kids were little, and it was pretty. It was a, a pretty well. There, there were a lot of young families there, so it was nice. It was just a fun, nice thing for people to go to. Um, and uh, the the woman who happened to be in the um, uh, the house. What's the Putnam, house? Putnam House, yeah. The Putnam House. 
she was actually manning the pies, oh. but she gave my husband and I a full tour of the house anyway, and she had a lot of knowledge about it. So it was pretty. It was a. Uh, it was a good. It was a good uh, turnout and a fun day. Beautiful day for it. Same thing with the town day too. There's a lot of. There were a lot of newer vendors there that are new to the town, so it was good to meet new, new, new people that are coming into the town. It's good to see young families too. I also had a couple of comments from people who had never been before, and again, some of them, a couple of more actually long-time residents just had never gone down, decided to go, a couple of other newer residents, and they were just so complimentary as to, you know, the, the Putnam House and the, the old schoolhouse and all the, you know, all the historical stuff down there. They weren't aware of it, first of all, so that when we, they went down there, they were just so pleasantly surprised and, and are, and, uh, as far as what's been done down there and what we have for, uh, you know, to commemorate our past. Yeah. Yes. And uh, they were very favorably impressed, which is great, you know. I have to admit, I myself, I believe the last time I was there it was with a dancer yeah. and for the purpose of a dance, and the dancers were there as well. I didn't know that was back there, so really? it was pretty. It was really, no, it was really interesting to walk it, and they had, you know, of course, people in costume t teaching us about the yeah. different. It was excellent. Well, well, done. It was well done. It was well done, and and fun. They made it so much fun for the for the kids and stuff like that. So it was a good job and, and a, a good a good thing to keep it keep it going. So, Madam Chair, just one more. Thing. I, I forgot to mention the passing of Bill Colbert. Uh, 90 years young, uh, but the gentleman has been in town for a, a number of years and uh, put in a lot of years with uh, Parks and Recreation, Youth mm -hmm. Basketball, um, 40 years worth of stuff. Uh, mm -hmm. But recently passed away, and again, I'd like mm -hmm. to pass on our condolences and appreciation for all of his years of service to the community. And, uh, just a wonderful guy, and, as I said, 90 years young, and a uh, great guy, but contributed an awful lot to, uh, to youth activities and Parks and Rec. And, I uh, just want to recognize, uh, again, the service and its passing. All right. And with that, do we have a motion? Madam Chair, I move to adjourn open session. Second. Motion by Mr. Walner, second by Mr. O'Leary. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Aye.